Hey guys, MP Carlson here. Welcome back to another weekly cycle podcast. How are you guys doing? You alright? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing good. I hope you are too. Stuff and things, conversation topics and such. What are we talking about today? I don't know. What are we talking about today? What's there to talk about? I'm going to talk about some stuff. Um, well, today I guess I, I'm going to talk a, a bit more in detail about the collab the announcement that I uh, uploaded on Monday and uh, I'm just gonna clear up a few things because uh, I, I know some people are getting a bit confused because I, I did talk very fast in that video for some reason not once did it occur to me that that might be a problem because people are gonna need to know what I'm saying and so maybe I should talk clearer but I, I figured I, I didn't think it was hard to understand what I was saying I just think you know you had to keep up but I didn't think that it would actually be difficult to know the words I was saying. It might take a few rewatches to to fully get everything, but that doesn't mean that there isn't everything available there for you. But apparently it does mean that to some people, because some people had no idea what I was even talking about. A few things I'll go over, I guess. Um, uh, one, if you make a YTP entry, you have to make a dragon egg, okay? The dragon egg is for everyone who wants to enter the YTP entry is an optional extra thing. The reason the reason for that is because I want as many people involved in this as possible, but I know that a lot of people can't make YouTube poops or or don't know how to make YouTube poops, don't have the ability to make YouTube poops, stuff like that. Um, so I wanted a way for everyone to be involved, even if they weren't YouTube poopers themselves and they couldn't make YouTube poops. So I figured um, if we just do the dragon egg thing, then at least a bigger number of people will be able to do that than to make a YouTube poop. So there's there is there's slightly different rules for the for the dragon eggs as there is for the YouTube poops, and I I shouldn't have uh, have kind of glossed over that and treated them as like they were the same thing. I should have gone through individual rules for each part, the dragon egg and the YTP entry. Um, I went over the rules for the YTP entry, and I think you you get that. You know, there's uh, it, the so the main source has got to be Spyro. You can use any of the Spyro games or anything relating to Spyro. It's, it, this isn't like the, the Shrek collab that M. Plemons doing currently. It isn't like the single source collab that Jimmy Davis did last year. This is, this is just an, a normal collab. You don't have to stick to one source and you can't use any audio or images or anything from anything else. Of course you can. You can, it's just, it's just a collab. It's just a normal collab, but the main focus is Spyro. So feel free to use anything else in the entry as long as the main source is Spyro. I, I think that's the best way to the best way to say it. Um, and yeah, the uh, the entry should be between thirty seconds and one and a half minutes. I have received a couple entries so far, and uh, some of them are under thirty seconds. So that you know, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not there's I'm not going to be really strict about the minimum length, but I am going to be strict on the maximum length. So if it's under 30 seconds, that's fine. But if it's over one and a half minutes, then chances are a lot of it's going to be taken out. Well, maybe not a lot of it, but quite a bit of it is going to be taken out because um, I want to. I want as many people to join this as possible, and I'm going to try and accept more entries for this than I did for the Foster's collab. And you know, the Foster's collab itself, I managed to squeeze down to like 30, 35 minutes. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be longer than that anyway, but I don't want it to be ridiculously long. I don't want it to be like an hour and a half or anything like that. I want it to be a, a reasonable length, because that is on top of the fact that I'm also doing a lot in the video myself. Um, I, cause it's not just going to be like a normal collab where like the host would make uh, one or two entries as well. It's going to be like, I'm going to do quite quite a bit more than a normal collab host would do for this collab essentially, because I have a lot of ideas, and I want to put forth those ideas, and originally I was thinking, well, I, I think I need to choose here. Am, am I doing it, or is everyone else doing it? But I decided on, actually, no, why don't I just break the rules here a bit and do both? I'm going to do quite a bit of it, and but it's also going to be a collab, and, you know, it doesn't matter <laughs> if that doesn't necessarily follow the rules that a normal collab would. I, 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 want, it, I want it to be a big, important thing. And I want your involvement in it, but I don't want it to be all left up to you either, because then it might seem as though, like, well, I, I didn't really know what to do for this video, so I turned it into a collab so that everyone else could do the work for me, or anything like that. Because I do want to do a lot for this. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to be strict about the aspect ratio, as long as the watermark was in the black bars. You know, I 
This is something I, I, don't, I don't really understand. Like, is it is it difficult to make video sources and things fit the aspect window in your video editor? Because it's not, for me. Like, every time I'd load something into the video editor, I would crop it to make sure it fit perfectly in, in the 16x9 frame. But it seems like that, that's a difficult thing for some people to do, or they just don't think about it. It's, it, it's strange. Because I did receive one entry where um, there was a load of different clips, they were all different sizes, and so instead of um, making them all kind of the same size, filling the whole frame with the video source, they moved their watermark every different shot. Um, but they didn't change the size of their watermark, so it meant that when I went in and edited it and made all, all the shots all the same size, then their watermark was changing size and it didn't look very good. So I, I just want to say that, like, I don't see how it can be that big of an issue to make the, any, any video source you import into your project fit a 16x9 frame. Like, most things do. Films do. YouTube videos do. TV shows do. Most things fit that frame. I don't know why it's so difficult to find things that fit that frame, or also, if you have things that don't fit that frame, to make them fit that frame. So just just, just keep that in mind, because I ultimately... I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna edit your entry in some way. I, I'm not. I don't mean like massively edit it. I'm not gonna like change what you've done necessarily. But I'm. I am gonna make it fit in the video when I put it together. And if that means changing the 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 size of of some shots, but that also means changing the size of the watermarks, then I'm afraid that's that's nothing I can fix. That's something that you would have had to think about when you made your entry. I apologize if in the final video that makes it so that your entry looks a bit weird, but it would have looked weird if I'd left it anyway, because all the shots were different sizes. It just, it doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, I, I did want to stress that other thing about that, um, because I have received a few YTP entries without Dragon Eggs, and I, I realize that that's probably because I haven't actually uploaded the Dragon Egg video yet, although I will have, I hopefully will have by the time you're watching this, um, I'm planning to... it's Thursday when I'm recording this now, and so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get that Dragon Egg video out tomorrow, and then I'll put the link... I'll put the link in the video, I'll put it in the description of the video as well, I'll probably put it in the comments, and I'll put about it on Twitter just so everyone knows this video is available now, so, you know, go pick a, a random Dragon Egg. Or, well, maybe not a random one, but just pick one. Because, um, I, I've received a few Dragon Egg entries, because people have managed to get the, uh, the source of, of the Dragon Egg animations from other places. Um, but a few of them have all been the same Dragon Egg, in fact. The uh, the first Dragon Egg that you get in Spyro 3, which is called Isabel, I think. Um, and a few of them have all been that same dragon. And uh, so I, I, I would encourage you to uh, not use the first one, essentially. It will, it will be up by now, hopefully. But um, if you haven't gone through that and picked your Dragon Egg yet, I would say please, please try not to pick one of the early ones, especially not the first one, Isabel. Use, use, there's, there's over a hundred, I think there's like a hundred and forty in total. That's a lot to pick from, you don't all have to pick number one. But about the Dragon Eggs, I want to go into a bit more detail about the rules for the Dragon Eggs because I wasn't very clear on that. Essentially, um, it's not... You don't have to treat it like a YouTube poop. I, I don't mind if you do, that's obviously fine. If that's how you want to edit it, then that's fine. But ultimately, you can do whatever you want with it, um, as long as you follow these kind of guidelines. Essentially, um, well, the original Dragon Egg animations are 5 to 10 seconds long. So I'm not going to put a time limit or anything, but, you know, don't don't go crazy with, with the time. Don't, like, make it, like, 30 seconds or a minute. Well, 30 seconds isn't too bad, I suppose. But... Don't make it like over a minute long when you've only got five to ten seconds of footage to actually work with here. It would be good if a lot of them were shorter because that way I could fit more in. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna try and fit every single dragon egg I get in. Not necessarily every single YTP entry, but I will definitely try and fit every dragon egg if I can. But yeah, you don't have to treat it like a YouTube poop if you don't want to. If you do want to, then that's perfectly fine. I have received a few dragon eggs that are like YouTube poops using the dragon egg source. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want with it, ultimately. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, you have total creative freedom with that, really. One one small thing that a, a few people have uh, not done is um, 
the name of the dragon egg, the name of the, the baby dragon in the egg, I, I want you to take that name and replace it with your name, essentially. Not replace it with just a random thing, a random name or a random word or anything like that. Replace it with your name, so that that way people will know that that's you who made this dragon egg. And that also means that you don't need a watermark in the corner for the dragon eggs. Ultimately, you can just take the watermark that you would have normally put in the corner and just put it over the name instead, instead of in the bottom right or the bottom left or whatever. But yeah, dragon eggs, they don't need a watermark, but you need to replace the name with your name, not with anything else. It needs to be with your name. Okay, is that clear? I hope that's clear. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to clear those things up because um, some people were getting confused about that. Um, so anything else? Was there anything else about that? Yeah, if you if you make a dragon egg and a YTP entry, chances are in the video your dragon I'm gonna play your dragon egg before your YTP entry because that would just make sense. But one thing to note is that I'm prob I'm more likely to accept your dragon egg than I am to accept your YTP entry. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna be as harsh. Well, I don't know if harsh is the right word, but I'm I'm gonna try and accept more entries than I did for the Foster's collab, like I already said. But what I, I'm going to try and accept everyone's dragon eggs if I can. So it's 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 more likely that your dragon egg will be accepted than it is that your YTP entry will be accepted. I mean, if they're both good, then obviously I'll accept both. But but I just want to point that out that your if you see your dragon egg in the video, it doesn't necessarily mean that your YTP entry will be in the video too. I apologize for that. But again, I'm going to try and accept as many as I can. It, it 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 should be good. I I'm I'm thinking um I'm thinking of I'm pro I'm probably gonna try and uh, mold them a bit um because w with the Fosters collab it was kind of because everyone was doing the same episode of Fosters so I kind of just like went through each entry thought okay let's take this scene from the episode who did a, who edited this scene who made who made stuff out of this scene and then I'll just kind of arrange them in the best order and then play that through cut and split the entries, fit them around each other, and it will just kind of all, all mesh together nicely. But for this, because they're all going to be different things, then uh, they'll probably be kind of uh, molded around. Your entry may be split up and put in a different order. Um, I may take small parts of it out. Ultimately, I think I may actually actually go in and edit your entry just a bit. I'm, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not just going to like take someone's entry and think, okay, well, this is rubbish, but I'm going to try and make it into something I want to make. I want it to be nothing like that. Your entry is your entry, and I'm going to accept it that way. But I, I am going to try and mold them all to fit the entire video. Not exactly too sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I think that will be a, be a better way to put it all together, considering that a lot of this is going to be done by me. I mean, obviously, a huge chunk of it is going to be done by all you guys, but it's not going to be just you guys. It's going to be me as well, and so I'm going to kind of create the basis of the video and m kind of find ways to fit your entries in that, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's, that's I think that's all I, I need to say about the collab. Um, again, the deadline is June 1st, so you've still got um, well over two months. I said three months in the video, that's because I would think I was expecting that announcement to be out earlier than it was. Um, again, I, I apologize that the Dragon Egg video was was late. Um, I think when I when I was making the announcement, I thought that there would already be one on YouTube, uh, just a, a huge video, a compilation of all the uh, Dragon Egg hatching animations. But there wasn't one, I couldn't find one, so I have had, actually had to make one myself, and I've had to download um, a full playthrough of Spyro 3 and cut cut out all the dragon egg animations and put them together in one big video. And considering the internet here is pretty terrible, um, that's taken a long time. It's taken a long time to download every single part of that playthrough and then go in and change them all. And uh, just as I'm saying this, I have noticed that the internet is is now not working. Um, it has been on and off all day, but I thought it was working now. But it's not. It is not working. So I'm going to try and see if I can sort that out soon. Which is a shame because there was something I wanted to find that I was going to talk to you guys about. Yeah, I I, I wanted to uh, go through. I wanted to read through uh, some some things. Like I wanted to find some comments 
and some tweets that I, I wanted to read out to you guys for, for certain reasons. Um, I'm just looking, because I've written down like a list of things I wanted to talk about today. Um, Brexit, yeah. I really don't... I, I don't want to talk about Brexit, so I'm not I'm not going to go into detail about Brexit, but um, um, basically the uh, the thing that I was going to read out, the thing on Twitter, it, it was it was kind of related to Brexit. I was I was talking to someone on Twitter about this whole Brexit thing, um, and I, I did put that tweet a couple of days ago saying, um, hey, you know that Brexit thing that we voted for eight months ago? Well, stuff is finally happening with it. Did it just take everyone that long to realize there's no backing out now? Because it has taken ages, and there's still people who are thinking, "Hey, you know what? Let's not do it. Let's 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 just pretend the Brexit vote never happened." And I'm just sitting here thinking, "No, we we voted, and the majority wanted us to leave. That's not a bad thing. Stop treating that like that was a bad thing we did. That was not a bad thing we did." I've seen that a lot of people are now saying that they regret voting leave. I don't. I really don't regret voting leave. I looked through all the reasons for bo for voting to remain and voting for leave, and I decided that voting leave would be the better option. I stand by that decision, and I'm not changing my mind. I still think that that will be better when we've left. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's obviously going to be the people who are saying, like, oh, well, um, that, uh, the, you know, yeah, you know, stuff about, like, immigrants and, and things like that, and uh, ultimately, I, I don't care. There was a lot more reasons to vote for leave then there was anything to do with immigrants because you know I'm, I'm not against immigrants why would I be against immigrants legal immigrants I mean illegal immigrants yes but you know any rational person would be against illegal immigrants but you know there's a, there's like uh, people saying like oh well everyone who voted to leave just wants every non-british person out of the country everyone who's everyone who's not English is it out of the anyway, I don't want to go into detail about this because I, I don't want to talk politics. Not only because I don't know enough about it to, to uh, make a statement or anything like that, but also because I don't want to, because it's not a very positive thing to talk about, because it's always negative. There's, there's never any positive news about politics. And, and I want to be positive. I don't want to focus on the, on the negative things in the world. Because when people focus too much on the negative things in the world, they start to think that there is only negative things in the world. Or there is more negative things in the world than there is positive things. It's why I don't like to watch the news very often, because it's all negative stuff. And when people watch the news, and they see all this negative stuff, they start to think, the world is a terrible place, there's nothing good around, everything is terrible. Which completely is not true. If you just heard me say that, and you're starting to think, well, but everything is terrible, what are you talking about? You, you, why are you saying that people think there is only negative, there is only negative. You are one of those people. So I think what you need to do is find the good things in the world and appreciate them. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, you know, Brexit, it's good. I'm glad that things are finally happening with it. There's that, like, the triggering the Article 50 thing. Watch your majigs. It's taken everyone so long to finally accept the fact that we voted for this and it's too late to back out now. For those who want to back out, I don't want to back out. Um, and about like the whole um, Scotland having their own referendum, I think that's great. I think that's good because I know the uh, an overwhelming majority of Scotland voted Remain, and it was just overshadowed by England. So I'm glad they're having their own referendum. I don't know when that's going to be, but yeah, I, I think that's really good. It's good to have independence, really. It's good to make your own decisions. Don't let other people make the decisions for you. But that's all I'm going to say on that, because who can, who Nobody comes to this channel for politics, so why am I even talking about it in the first place? Um, Crash Bandicoot, there we go. That was the one last thing I wanted to talk about here. Because uh, I haven't really talked that much about the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Um, I mentioned it very briefly when it not long after it was announced in my uh, two-year anniversary celebration video. And some people ask, like, what's your opinion on the, on the news of the Crash Bandicoot remasters? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's all good. Yeah, it seems good. And that's pretty much all I said because there wasn't really any information about it other than, hey, there's going to be Crash Bandicoot remasters. Nobody knew anything about it. But now it's getting closer to the time where they are actually released. There's, like, gameplay footage and trailers and screenshots and everything and everybody knows kind of what it's going to be like. And uh, I just want to kind of give my opinions on it. I think it's 
great. I don't think it's uh, amazing, but I think it's definitely it's definitely going to be good for the Crash Bandicoot series. And I, I think a couple of people were asking, um, do you, do you think it, it it's good that now a lot more people are talking about Crash, or did you prefer it when it was kind of like a select group of people who kind of talked about it without outside input or anything like that? Um, I, I I don't see it as like um, I liked Crash Bandicoot before it was cool or anything like that, because um, it doesn't seem like there's new fans, if you know what I mean. I I don't think that announcements of Crash Bandicoot remasters and all the footage and stuff. I don't think that has created new Crash Bandicoot fans. I don't think anyone has seen that and thought, oh, hey, this looks cool. I'm going to look into Crash Bandicoot, see what this is, and then you look up all the original Crash Bandicoot games, and then you've created a new Crash Bandicoot fan. I don't think it's anything like that, because ultimately I think anyone who has not played any Crash Bandicoot game is not really going to give a damn about Crash Bandicoot remasters. Because they don't really know Crash Bandicoot. Who cares about HD remasters of a game I've never played? Ultimately, I think what's happened is because there has been nothing Crash Bandicoot for, like, coming on 10 years now, because the, because it's been completely dormant, I think a lot of Crash Bandicoot fans have just been dormant. They still know of Crash Bandicoot, but nobody really talks about it because there's no news about it. And all of a sudden, there's now news about Crash Bandicoot, and so all these people who were originally fans are now talking about it again. They, they, they were always fans, they just had nothing to talk about because there was no new stuff. And that's what I think has happened, so I, I'm not annoyed that now Crash Bandicoot is in the spotlight. I think it's great, and I look forward to seeing what happens after the remasters. Maybe we'll get completely new games. That would, that would be really good. In terms of Spyro, um, I don't think they should do Spyro remasters. I, I don't. Because if you look at the Spyro games, they're very different than the Crash Bandicoot games. And I think Spyro is kind of... Spyro is what it is, essentially. Spyro is a very unique series. It's a very... It's got its own personality, its own charm. Not that Crash Bandicoot really doesn't, but... Like, you could apply aspects of Crash Bandicoot to anything. You can't exactly apply aspects of Spyro to anything else, apart from Spyro if that makes sense. So I, I don't think doing Spyro remasters would be a good idea. Uh, to be honest, I'm I'm perfectly okay with Spyro just continuing on in, in Skylanders. I, I, I've kind of gotten over the fact that the, the Skylanders, it ruined my childhood and, and now Spyro is ruined. They've turned him into an ugly mutant thing. Yeah, I've, I've gotten over that now. I don't mind at all. I, I know, because I know that there is still a load of people who love the original Spyro, and no matter how many times you reboot Spyro, it's n nothing is going to come close to the original trilogy of Spyro, so, and that, that knowledge is always just good to have. Because, just because people make new things using things that you loved as a child, doesn't mean that the things you loved as a child are gone. You know, people always say stuff like, ah, oh, this ruined my childhood, and you've, you've destroyed my childhood, but, y y no, because that's not what's happened. Because it's not ruined your childhood, because your childhood is still there. Nothing goes back in time to change your childhood. Your childhood was what it was, and you can't change that. Nothing has ruined that. Things might be bad now, but that doesn't make things that already happened bad. So it's, it's kind of like a thing I hate when people say, like, you've ruined my childhood, or this ruined my childhood, or so, you know. Your childhood is still intact. Nothing can affect your childhood, because it's been and gone. It's the past. You can't change it. It is what it is. It's what you made it when you were a child. Nothing that happens when you're not a child changes what already happened when you were a child. No, it's just, it's, it's common sense. Um, but speaking of, of Crash Bandicoot and Spyro as well, I am currently working on a video um, relating to Crash and Spyro. Um, I think I've, I've briefly mentioned it. It's, it's a video where I kind of want to talk about the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy, um, but it is somewhat um, related to Spyro as well. I don't want to give anything away because I want it to be a big surprise, but um, you know that that's coming along nicely. I, I I'm really looking forward to actually um, getting into into that video and uh, making it as best as I possibly can. Um, I don't know when that's going to be, but I'm I'm hoping that that's going to be before the uh, Crash remasters actually are released, because uh, they're ultimately the same game and uh, they may have fixed a load of the problems that I might have talk, talked about 
in uh, the uh, the Crash Bandicoot original trilogy in the remasters, so I don't want to look like an idiot when I do that. So I'm trying. I, I need to make sure I get that video done before the uh, Insane trilogy actually comes out. So I I think that's it. I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that's all I really want to talk about today. There were a few other things I wanted to go over, but uh, considering the internet is not working at the moment, I can't actually do that. So I guess we'll just leave it there. Um, trying to think what's what's coming next for the channel. Let's have a look. Um, there will be something next week, I think. Hopefully, if all goes to plan. Um, next, or maybe not next week. Either either next Sunday or or the Monday after Monday. So either the 26th or the 27th, basically, there's going to be a new thing there that I'm not going to tell you guys about. Um, and there may be uh, the first episode of Little Big Planet PSP, um, if I can actually get around to working on that. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what's going to be happening next week. So thank you, everybody, so much for listening, and I will see you next week sometime. Goodbye.